a lot to writing a killer pitch that will actually get a response from an agent. Summing up your entire novel, all of your characters and their personalities, and the world that you built, and all the themes you packed in there in just a few paragraphs can be super challenging. Here's the deal. When you pitch an agent, whether it's in a query letter or in person at a conference, you can have the most mind-blowing hook for your book. You can have a crazy, unique voice or perspective. But if there's no structure obvious to your story, in other words, if there's no story, they're probably going to pass. In last week's Writing Workshop Wednesday on how to outline your book fast, I mentioned that my good friend Lindsay Rebar, who was a literary agent for nine years, gave me a handy formula for writing query letters. This thing is a lifesaver because instead of sitting there thinking, how do I start this pitch? Where do I even begin to describe my novel? What do I put in and what do I leave out? You just fill in the brackets. So without further ado, here's the magic formula. So first of all, when you do this, don't try to be voicey or even grammatically correct. Just fill in the brackets. You're going to have two rambly run-on sentences. Let's try the first sentence and talk about why each part is important. You need to start with a character. I know that sounds a little like, duh. But authors often get so caught up in the awesome worlds that they've built or the crazy cool hook that they have or the amazing premise or the exciting inciting incident Ooh, tongue twister that they forget to tell us who the story is about. If you're writing a book with an ensemble cast, then either choose to focus your pitch on the protagonist who has the most to lose in the story or describe the group as a whole, like the survivors of a plane crash on a mysterious island. Readers connect with characters, not premises or worlds, and agents are readers. So start with a character. Mine's going to be a shy loner named Jack. The status quo is what's going on in the character's life right now. If possible, try to show that things need to change for this character. They can't just go on the way they are. Harry wasn't just living the good life at the Dursleys. Katniss was facing the reaping again, an annual event. Rachel's alcoholism has cost her her job and she has an unhealthy obsession with her ex and his new wife. Your character may or may not know it, but their life needs to get shaken up. My status quo for Jack is he's going to be working up the courage to finally ask out the girl he's been crushing on for years. This is the earthquake, the new kid moving to town, the letter from Hogwarts. This is the moment the story really starts. For Jack, that's going to be aquatic aliens crash landing in his small town's lake and kidnapping Jill because they think she's the long lost heir to their planet's sovereign power and they need her help because they're under attack by rival aliens. I told you it would be long, and this sentence isn't even over yet. What does this inciting event mean for your character personally? We can imagine what an alien invasion means for the world, but what does it mean for Jack? Well, they kidnap Jill, so it throws his plans for homecoming king and queen in peril. So there's the first sentence done. Now on to the second. We already know the character, but what is their goal in light of everything that just happened? For Jack, that's obviously saving Jill, which means he's going to have to convince the aliens that she's not really their queen. But there's conflict, of course. Every goal needs an obstacle or 50. Now your protagonist probably has a zillion obstacles to overcome in your book. Here you wanna pick the one that's most relevant to the stakes and not just the plot stakes, but the personal stakes for your protagonist. And if you've done your job as an author, then the two are going to be intrinsically tied together by the climax of your novel. So Jack's got some obvious obstacles to deal with, like the fact that these aliens are aquatic and he can't like breathe underwater, or the fact that unless these aliens somehow magically speak English, he's going to have a really hard time communicating with them. But what matters most to Jack in this story? Jill. So the conflict I include in my pitch is going to be Jill related. And that's going to be increasing proof that Jill might be a little less human than he thought. See right there, you can imagine how gut-wrenching that slow revelation is going to be for Jack. Is this girl that he thought he knew, that he thought he was in love with, really someone or something else entirely? Is a happily ever after even possible in this book? 
Last up is the consequences, which again are just the stakes of your story. What happens if the protagonist fails? Agents want to see stakes because stakes tell us why this story matters. In the case of my pitch, the aliens would take Jill away from Earth forever and Jack can kiss his homecoming court dreams goodbye. So there you go. This is the structure of your story in just two sentences. This is the big old ugly lump of clay that you can start shaping into something beautiful and voicey and catchy. You might shift the order of things. You might embellish a little bit here and add some more detail there. And I hope you're gonna clean it up grammatically a little bit. But the important thing is the bones of your story are in this pitch. I would love to read your messy rambly run on sentences. If you do this query formula, please paste your results in the comments below. That's it for this writing workshop Wednesday. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe down below. And until next time, keep writing. If you're writing a book with an ensemble cast, oh Rosa, please. If you're writing a... <laughs>